Welcome everybody. Joe Marquez here once again from the Sons of Technology to showcase for you part one of our Google Sites eBinder series. This video is just going to give you a walkthrough of what an eBinder is and how we use it within Google Sites. And subsequent videos will dive deeper into different aspects of the eBinder. First off, when we're talking about eBinders, just binders in general, we have to figure out a learning outcome or the reason we're asking our students to create binders in the first place. And for me, a binder has to be a place where students can easily have a collection of work, be able to have reflection on their day's learnings, and finally a place when they need it can recollect all the learning they've had because they have really um, taken ownership of creating this binder. And an e-binder is just a place that allows it to happen digitally uh, for uh, those schools and districts that have students working on the computers. E-binders are also a great place to put in physical work as well. You know, um, Google um, allows you to take images with phones or with your Chromebooks or with your laptops. So even if you're doing physical work, you can take a digital copy of that and then upload that to an eBinder. So I highly recommend that even when you do a traditional blended learning environment with traditional work and digital work, I highly recommend that all of that work goes into one location and an eBinder is a great place for that. Now, one of the things that has made teachers timid of using Google Sites as an eBinder is, is the fact that um, there is no template gallery in the new Google Sites. The classic sites did have a template gallery where the students could just make a copy of a template, but in the new Google Sites, that is not the case. But we here at Sons of Technology have created a hack around for this. Now, we've already made an entire video on how you can do this, but simply what we've done is we've created a folder called eBinder Template Gallery. You can make a folder in your Google Drive and call it whatever you want. And we create our binders in this folder. And let me tell you why. When you are creating a Google site um, and you want to share it, there's only a few options you can do. One is adding a collaborator physically by typing in their name here. Um, but you can't give it to anybody with the link. So if you wanted to give this template out to students and hope they can just make a copy of it without making any edits, that is not possible. Because if I, if I select anyone with the link can, it only gives us can edit. And let me tell you why this is the case. Because a eBinder or a Google site is a website. And if you want people to view your website without editing, you just give them the published view. But the problem with doing this as an eBinder for your students is that a published view of a website cannot be completely copied. So it's useless to give it of anybody with the link can view of a published. You want them to be able to have um, something like anybody with the link can view um, as an editor so that they can make a copy of the site. So let me show you what happens here. Because once again, the only option under this draft view is anyone with a link can edit. There's no way to change it. But if you, in this folder, if you make the folder link as anyone with a link can view, and you make your Google uh, eBinder template in this folder, let me show you what it does. Here's one of our examples of a copy that you can have. If I go to my editing, because I placed it in the folder, it now gives you the option of anyone with the link can view. And now a student can go to the site and it, it'll let them view it, but they can make a copy of it. So let me show you, um, and so that's why we, we're, we, we want you to be able to create that folder. And if you want to see how to do it exactly, you can definitely watch the video of how to do that um, step by step. Another thing is you want there to be a cadence within your eBinder, meaning something every day your, or every project or every assignment your students are doing to interact with the eBinder. We recommend the task page. A task page is something the students use every day, which allows them to rewrite the essential question you have in your Google Classroom or on your board, a place for them to um, add learning artifacts, um, which are things created by the student to help them in the learning process. And then finally, a learning blog, a place where they can reflect on their daily learnings. So that's the task page we would recommend in the class. We also recommend uh, the creation of learning artifacts, which we said earlier. This is something students are creating daily. They're already doing this. So if, you, if they're making a project in Google Slides, or they're taking notes, or they're doing this, or they're making that, making mind maps, all of those would be considered learning artifacts, which are things that are lasting, durable, and public. So that is what a learning artifact is. So we just want you to understand that in a Google 
site eBinder, they're going to constantly be adding things to it daily of what they're creating that helps them understand the material. Next is we need to make sure that there's a way that students can have check-ins with their teachers. Now, this isn't necessarily for a grade. It's just so students can ask a teacher a question or a teacher can say, hey, let me check you the status of your eBinder. Um, so we'll show you a few different ways that you can do that. Another one is, you know, once the students have made a copy of your template, um, if, if you make any adjustments to your uh, original master template, it's not going to be reflected on the student's um, copy. Um, so a good way around that is by doing what we call a, a, um, an embedding of a Google Doc or Google Slide. And that creates a hack where you can update your Google Doc or Google Slide and will automatically update on the student's site. And finally, we have a Google Site font hack, um, which we have a video already made on how you can change all the different fonts on your Google Site. And then finally, different options of how students can take notes. Now, let me show you real quickly an example of a student's eBinder. Now, in this student's eBinder, they had never worked in a, a Google Site before. They have never um, used um, any kind of uh, of eBinder before. And all we said to the students is this is a place that you're going to put things that you understand. And so at the very beginning, uh, we, you know, of course we talk about high school goals and college and career goals, but in the binder that they get a copy of, they are, it's already pre-made as units. And in the units, they are going to be taking everything they've learned and embedding it into their site. So they can embed their notes right here. They can embed all their learning artifacts right here, the things they created. And finally, their learning artifact down here on the bottom. Notice this is the first time this student has used this before. So there's very little added to this because they're just learning. But we had to explain to the students, hey, think of your eBinder as social media, just like you would with Instagram or Facebook um, or Twitter um, or Snapchat. Anytime that there's something in your life that you want to remember, you take a picture and add a caption. Think of that when you're doing your eBinder. And so when we talked about it that way, students really took a hold of their eBinder and they really started adding more. So look, students are taking pictures of work that help them understand. They're leaving captions of what they've done. If they're doing labs or project, they're taking picture of the project and kind of doing step by step of what they've done. And so by explaining to them this is like a social media platform, but for education, they really started to understand what we are doing. And again, in these sites, um, we actually started creating templates for the students. We didn't want them to have to make a brand new task page every time from scratch. So in the student template um, under the pages, we actually created a hidden page uh, called the unit task template. So every time they needed to make a new task page, instead of starting from scratch, all they would do is right click and make a copy. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the eBinder task page video. So that is our overview of what an eBinder is, utilizing Google Sites, um, how we can create an eBinder template to easily hand it out to the students, and what the task page and learning artifacts are, which make up the meat of, of, of allowing an eBinder to, to be beneficial to our students. So this is the overview. Hopefully you liked the overview, and hopefully this intrigues you enough to watch our subsequent videos on Google Site eBinders. Thank you so much for listening and have yourself a great day.